It's not just evolution, but we're conditioned to avoid the fact that currently we're essentially living in a golden age. This is OTR Ogre and Corgi, and hey, this is just my thoughts. So, hey, if you like, like, link, and subscribe, share it if you want to. Anyhow, let's get into this. I understand that, you know, thousands, if not millions of years of evolution has trained us to be constantly on edge, you know, looking for the next war over the hill. You know, everything is everything is the baseline, and the baseline is always miserable. Do you ever notice that? It's never, hey, we're doing good. <laughs> maybe, maybe people should, you know, I don't want to say take a holiday in Cambodia, but seriously, you should maybe take a, a year or two and live in a shittier country. And then be able to come back to America. <laughs> and it's not just America, like the West in general. I think it would really be good. You know, well, you know why I see so many immigrants that are doing amazing in the Western countries? Because they came from a country where things weren't as good. Were they necessarily totally bad? No. But there was a lack of opportunity, and too many people generally, all sorts of issues and problems. And it's funny how the op the optimistic outlook I see from people from the third world or the second world versus Americans that are just like, uh, today sucks, uh, it's the corporations, it's the government, it's whatever, it's everything but yourself, right? You ever notice that? And so I look at the world and I'm like, yeah, dude, let's put this in perspective. I can drive this truck for probably less than five days and I can afford to buy enough food for a whole fucking year. I could probably, if I really put my mind to it, if I had to, like we were talking beans and rice and foraging for wild edibles, I could probably do it in a day and a half, maybe less. You know, like, I'm not kidding when I say that. That's how good we have it. It's like literally the biggest problems that plagued mankind for countless generations. Like people will tell me about, well, uh, Little House on the Prairie era, you know, pioneers, that was the best. Well, really was it? Because there were a lot of diseases that were still kicking our ass and dead women died in childbirth. It's kind of a normal thing. Uh, you know, food was still something that you had to really grow. You know, that, that whole Dust Bowl thing, that really happened. That wasn't a joke. So you look at the modern era through, let's be honest, you know, petrochemicals, electricity, and modern agricultural techniques and refrigeration, we are living in a goddamn miracle these days. Science has done so much for us. And this is why when I, I think it's funny when people give like whatever sky genie their, you know, the credit for this, oh, for the blessings of whatever waggity woo ass God, you know, yeah, right, no, this is mankind's accumulated knowledge. But all the same, but because we've been trained, you know, mostly I said see it from people. A lot of you know the only reason most people are failing, it's not because the government or a corporation screwed you over. It's because generally you made bad decisions. I'm sorry, that's the cold hard truth. You don't like it, but I mean, like people act like having kids was just like oops, and then it happened. There's no oops about that. There's a choice. I mean, like. Look, if you're screwing because you like screwing and you don't like using Jimmy Raps or birth control, big fucking surprise. And I don't say, to say, think it's just the kids. Because, you know, this idea that you have kids and that's a constant, you know, victimization, I'm oppressed crutch is bullshit. Because I've known tons of people that have worked their way out of poverty with children. So don't bullshit me. I mean, how many Dave Ramsey uh, style scre screams, freedom screams, um, you know, we're debt free. Do we have to hear and then realize, yeah, maybe, maybe most of what we're dealing with is our own goddamn fault. Like, it's like the Jimmy Buffett theory, uh, Margaritaville. First, it's people in life blaming somebody else. And then it them, it's them sitting down and they get a bit more responsible and realizing, eh, it might be my fault. And then when they finally just fucking, you know, nut up, act like an adult, like, yeah, most of this shit is my own damn fault. But I mean, if you sit down and think, if I just calculate things, time-based decision-making with mathematics, I go through and I look at things and say, okay, what is the outcome going to be if I make this decision right now, if I don't have things planned out? And, and the answer might be, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forego a little pleasure right now, or validation or sensation, but in the long run, I'm gonna be doing way fucking better. The fact that you can you know, realistically, 
drive, say, drive truck, work the trades, do something. You can retire in this country in your early 30s. Just depends on what industry you get into and how well, how much you're willing to save. I mean, for instance, I've seen truckers out here. They don't even have a car. Like, they live in their truck. They are their truck. Um, they have, like, a cell phone and food. <laughs> That's about it. Like, there isn't much they have to pay for. And you can literally set yourself up. Like, I highly recommend getting a van because it's a doghouse on wheels. And then when you're back home or on the weekends, if you want to, you can go out and party. You know, hang out with your friends. You know, go to the lake or something. Pull off the aluminum canoe. A lot of things you can do. <laughs> what I'm getting at with that is, is that we don't have problems, for the most part, that aren't self-inflicted. And when you start to realize that, you start to make a change in yourself. You know, it's like someone's like, oh man, this hangover is making it hard to work. Well, stop fucking drinking during the weekdays. You know, or like, man, I can't afford any food. Well, stop pissing away your money at the bar or weed or whatever. Like, I don't have a problem people drinking, enjoying some weed. But the idea of trying to act like you're poor and depressed when you went to the casino and pissed away your money. Because I've known several friends that have done that shit. And then, like, early month, they're fucking rich. Mind you, these guys are on the system. Mid-month, they're getting by. Late month, they're begging for smokes from their friends. And this is some fucking stupid bullshit. Like, think about, think about the fact that you have people that are living off the system. And they don't even recognize how good they have it. <laughs> one, one of my friends, he did. He really did. He used to say this joke when people say, How you doing? Better than I deserve. It was a play on Dave Ramsey. <laughs> but it is funny. Yeah, I've said this for years. And Christians get weirded out when they hear it. As Muslims, Christians, they all get weirded out. And I said, maybe this is paradise and we just don't recognize it. Like, what, what if this is heaven? And because we're so trained to destroy anything that works or is good... All we know how to do is destroy something once we've found something that's worth a shit. Like we're never just happy. We never just sit back and go, hey, we're good, we're groovy. Anyways, this is OTR, Ogre and Corgi. And hey, y'all have a good one. Take it easy. And uh, share it if you want to. Just try to appreciate how good you have it. Take it easy.